What would you do if somebody gave you a jigsaw puzzle made up of billions of pieces? What if some of those pieces were broken or defaced or even missing? Would you give up? This is the problem that faces biologists when they sequence or read the human genome. The machines that sequence the human genome cut the genome into millions and millions of pieces. This makes it easier to read the nucleic acids that make up our genome. But once you've read all the acids, identified them all, how do you put it all back together? It took scientists years to align the sequences the first time. But for practical medical tests, we need to be able to do it in hours, not years. The technology that allows us to do this is called next generation sequencing. It involves chemistry and biology and computers, the stuff of big science, but it also involves some 200-year-old simple mathematics. I'm Harrison Dreves, and this is a mathematical story. In the 1700s, the city of Königsberg in Prussia had seven bridges. Some citizens were curious whether they could make a round trip while walking over each bridge exactly once but no one could figure out how to do it. In 1736, Leonard Euler solved this problem. He drew the problem as an abstract network in which each bridge was represented by one edge and each landmass was represented by a node or these dots here. Mathematicians call this kind of representation a graph. Here's another example of a graph. Notice here that there's a path which travels each edge once. If a path travels each edge once, it's called an Eulerian path. Notice how with an Eulerian path, each node has an equal number of incoming and outgoing paths. That's because you have to come into the node and go out of the node. Now going back to the Konigsberg problem, notice how all of the nodes have an odd number of incoming edges. This means it's impossible to balance the number of incoming and outgoing paths. That means there is no Eulerian path here. On the other hand, suppose we want to find a path that passes through each node once. This is called a Hamiltonian path, and it's much harder to find than an Eulerian path. For example, here, this is not a Hamiltonian path because we have to pass through this node twice. Here's an example of a very simple Hamiltonian path. It's a circle, and we pass through each node once. Anything more complex, and this gets very hard. In fact, Sir William Hamilton sold this as a puzzle in the 1800s. The difference between Eulerian and Hamiltonian paths is very important when it comes to DNA sequencing. Just remember, Eulerian is easy, Hamiltonian is hard. Now let's get back to DNA assembly. Imagine all of those chopped up nucleotide pieces from before as nodes on a graph. And the edges through that graph connecting the sequences that fit together. Thus, a Hamiltonian path through this graph would represent the entire human genome sequence, passing through each node once. This was how the human genome was first assembled in 2000. But with billions of nodes, finding a Hamiltonian path is hard. This is part of the reason it took years to sequence the human genome the first time. Pavel Pevsner realized he could align the pieces much faster if he turned the problem into one of finding an Eulerian path. He took all the pieces from the sequencer and broke them down into much smaller three-letter sequences that overlapped with each other. Then he made a graph with all possible two-letter sequences comprising the nodes. For example, let's say he had a short piece with sequence AAT. He would then draw an edge from node AA to node AT.
the human genome is now defined by an Eulerian path through this graph in this order. For example, Several DNA assembly programs have already been written using Eulerian paths. They were used in 2009 to sequence the H1N1 flu virus and figure out how it was mutating to evade the human immune system. Future applications could even include cancer treatment, where being able to quickly sequence the entire genome of a cancer cell line is incredibly useful. It's a huge range of applications for a single 200-year-old mathematical trick. I'm Harrison Dreeves, and this has been a mathematical story.